poppin' everyone, my name is Shannon and I am the creator and founder of Poppin' Peppers LLC. Today I'm going to be doing a 100 envelope challenge. I do follow quite a few people in the budget community like Jordan Budgets and Budgets and Baddies. Those are just two of the few and so I thought it would be fun to create a 100 envelope challenge for the business. If you are wanting to do this challenge yourself, you are going to need 13 sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. These are just a few of them that I picked out and I will need to go get started on cutting them. When I first started doing this, I watched a tutorial by Davina C and she did a wonderful job in explaining how she cuts all the paper. I did have to tweak some things just a bit for mine because this is from the Dollar Tree. This is not the same kind of case that she used. So instead of having the, the strips at three inches, they're actually going to be 2.75 inches. If you are a student or you do have student loans, I'm pretty sure you're aware that they are trying to forgive 10,000 of all the way up to $20,000 of student loans. If you have Pell Grants, I am in that category. However, me and my husband, when we took out our loans, we were not expecting anyone to pay them back. A lot of the funds that we earn from the business are going to be going towards paying off our student loans. Even if we did get our amount forgiven, we would still owe a lot, unfortunately. So this is still something that we would need to work on anyways. There is a lot of talk that it might fall through and it might not happen. So we are just going to be prepared and we are going to save so that we can pay off our student loans. Alrighty, so I have just finished cutting the 13 sheets of cardstock into 2.75 inch kind of slices. And now we have to cut these in half at the six inch mark. So I've cut down those 12 inch pieces in half. So now we have a 2.75 strip by six inches. I went ahead and designed numbers one through 100 in Cricut Design Space. That way I didn't have to have any trouble making the stickers that would go on them. I went ahead and I laminated each one and then cut them down to size like this. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and take these numbers and stick them on. That's my first one. Once everything is completed, you're going to have something like this. This is finally one through 100 and I've got them all in the box. So I am really excited how this turned out. I do not like saving one. So I kind of created my own challenge. I don't know if this one already exists, but it's going to be $6,771 when everything is all said and done. Basically for this challenge, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to associate envelope numbers with bill denominations. And once you pass a denomination, you're going to then round to the next highest bill denomination. For example, envelope one would get $1 bill. And because you have passed one, you're going to jump up to the next highest bill denomination would be five. So envelopes two through five would get a $5 bill and then envelopes six through 10 would get a $10 bill, envelopes 11 through 20 would get a $20 bill, envelopes 21 through 50 would get a $50 bill, and then envelopes 51 through 100 would get a $100 bill. This is just something that I thought would be easier because I did not want to deal with the single dollar bills. I thought that would be tedious, and this is one way to avoid that. I am on my way to get ready to go to the Arizona Worm Farm. It is a place where you can get compost and worms, worm tea, a lot of healthy and wonderful things for your plants. So I will see you there. everyone it is a new week today I'm going to be making some new bags for the garden buddies I saw a YouTube video using this one and I thought I'd give it a shot because I am using muslin bags I really want the ink to pop on there so this is what I will be trying out today I got my custom stamp in the mail I am so excited I will be able to show you this once I start inking and then hopefully fingers crossed everything turns out well I got this from Weston Sage I don't know if you can see that right there, but they do custom stamps. They are also on Etsy. I highly recommend them. If you are in need for a custom stamp, that is one place you can go to get it. Some of the items that I'm going to be using for 
doing the muslin bags is going to be, like I said, the Speedball ink right here for the screen printing ink. I do have a piece of acrylic that I put some cabinet bumpers on. That way it kind of is a little bit raised up. I've also got this roller here. That way I can roll the ink and it has an even consistency. We do need some muslin bags. So I've got these at bulk from Michaels. I've also gone ahead and cut down some cardboard pieces. I really enjoy using whatever I can from the things that I have. This right here is just a piece of cardboard from the backings from the cardstock that I've been purchasing for my planter signs. And then I have some newsprint paper as well that I bought off of Amazon. I just cut down. That way I can keep them inside to keep the muslin bag pretty straight. I am not too sure how much ink I'm going to need. I'm only going to be doing a few bags just to test this. So I'm just going to smudge. I just opened the cap. I'm just going to smudge this on, making sure that this is a little bit cleaner. Just, I guess, smudge it on. Okay. That did kind of spread places. I tell that when I do this, I'm going to need to be very careful. Okay, let's see. Pushing a little bit harder this time. I'm not really liking how that's coming out. What am I doing wrong? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll this. I might be using an ink pad after all. But you know what that is, it's just trial and error until you find something that works for you. Okay, that kind of felt good. But we shall see. Okay, that's coming out better. <laughs> that's a lot better. kind of that's the part that I like hearing like that little sticky sound all right this part is where I'm gonna have to try and be a little bit even so I'm just gonna go ahead press it down firmly a little bit It wasn't enough ink. That's so sad. It would have come out so good. All right, well, I'm not gonna be able to get it in the same spot, so I'm gonna just practice again on the same one. I'm so sad. This just goes to show that, you know, if you don't get something right the first time, don't be discouraged from trying again. Like, there's a learning curve to everything. Don't be afraid if you mess up. Just keep trying. I'm sure you'll get it. I am trying to encourage myself here. <laughs> so, let's see. I just went ahead and got a lint roller because I've noticed that a lot of fabric pieces are getting stuck. And so I just want to see if this is going to improve the stamp once I'm done. All right. I go ahead and set that down. I'm just going to keep my hand like this. One, two, three, 11, 12. Twelve. I'm gonna just count to twelve and see if that worked. Oh my gosh, it did! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Da, 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 da. Oh, man, look at the difference just from there to there. Okay, so roll it twice and hold down for twelve seconds. All right, let's do it. I have a good feeling this is gonna be the one, guys. Okay.
This will be the first bag. It's not like perfect, but it is pigmented, which is exactly what I wanted. So I have figured out the method, which is the hardest part. <laughs> I have my first bag. I'm so excited. All right, so it is about 5 30, 6 o'clock, and I am going to just call it quits. I did do quite a bit of rolling, and I think that there's this happy medium where the ink is kind of tacky, where it kind of performs the best. It's not exactly too wet, but it's not dry, and so that's where I'm learning. I'm 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 learning the medium. I have a few, just a few. <laughs> Um, so this is, let's see, this is how they turned out. They are not all consistent, but they did turn out really nice. So I, I feel like people would expect that when something is hand inked that it's not going to be exactly all the same. So these are just a couple of them. They did turn out really good, but there are some that turn out a little bit lighter in certain areas as you can see for this one but it's still super cute so i'm calling it quits for today so that definitely was an experience <laughs> and it was not easy but we persevered we tried different things when the things didn't work and then we learned that the ink needs to be a little bit tacky we need to lint roll the the muslin bags before we try and ink them and that you don't want to have too much ink otherwise it's just gonna blob everywhere so definitely some good learning today and hopefully we will be able to use them soon mm -hmm.